Uh, it felt great, you know. Um, obviously, yeah, a little bit of a hectic day. Um, kind of feels like a blur, but I'm gonna sleep really well tonight, uh, so I'm excited about that. And in the third quarter, it was just a, a lot of fun. I felt like we got in the flow, and uh, it all starts with stops. Uh, and, and so we were able to get stops and just push it out and get easier buckets. And obviously, we had a lot of guys who hit a lot of shots tonight. What do you do when you're a point guard? And I presume you don't remember his name, but I, I guess he probably didn't know what to play. So. What do you do when you're a point guard? You have no idea what's going on. Uh, <laughs> You just do your best. Um, really, I, I, I was uh, the coach, you know, uh, Coach Nurse and uh, Kyle, everybody, Mark too. They helped me out a lot. Um, really, we we're just trying to keep as simple of an action as possible. I don't know if we ran more than two or three actions when I was out there. Um, I felt like I was really handicapping the offense because I didn't really know too much of anything. But uh, it worked out, and I think. Uh, you need, to, you need to have certain stabilizers. Kyle is definitely one of them. Mark is definitely one of them. Where the ball, kind of, they just direct people and you kind of play off of them. Was it better in that second, that third quarter when you're in with most of the starters and you had Kyle there as well as a point guard? Uh, yeah, that was, that was great. And uh, he's always telling me what to do. And um, he's get, you know, he was giving me opportunities. He was telling me, here, come down, uh, come off of this play. If you don't have it, we'll put it on the weak side. But, um, you know, tremendous leader. Um, and, I mean, just, from being here for one day, I can see him, uh, Danny, they have very strong um, voices and, and uh, leadership ability and, and qualities for the scene. Why did you want to be in Toronto? Um, uh, I would say first and foremost, they really, really wanted me. Um, you know, I've, I've been around and I've been in a lot of different situations, but when the organization as a whole wants you, um, and, and from front office to coaches to players, uh, that's that means something, um, and, and so I've been in situations where maybe one of the three, two of the three, or you know whatever may want me. But um, and then secondly, um, obviously this team, what they stand for, what they've done this season, and for me to be able to, I almost feel like I'm cheating, you know, jumping into a 40-something win team. Um, it was just like I'm almost like man, that's like I don't know. It just feels kind of like I, I don't deserve it or something. But uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be part of the squad and. Um, I think there's there's definitely a, a hole um, that you know I can fill in terms of coming in at, uh, off the bench and, and uh, just try to be a dynamic playmaker. You got a standing ovation when you came in. What was going through your mind when you entered that? Uh, you know, I, would, I, <laughs> I was just trying to stay focused on the game, but it's hard at times. Just uh, every time I come to Toronto, it's always felt like a home game. Um, I, the fans always show out, and it doesn't matter what team I've played for. Um, but to come out here tonight and to get that type of reception, um, I was even though I was trying to be stoic and you know figure out what we were gonna do um, on the defensive end, I, it, it was very uh, heartwarming for sure. Larry is a pretty unique introduction to the court. <laughs> you seem to know where you fit in. Did somebody tell you what to do? Or did you just go with the flow? I think all my friends told me, uh, "Don't let this be you," or "This is about to be you," uh, and so. When I got here, you know, I played with Danny in the, at the time, the D League. And so I went up to Danny when I got here. I was like, hey, uh, you need to tell me what's going on because I, I don't want to be that video. I don't want to be Mark in the, <laughs> uh, in the other day. Yeah, yeah. Like all my friends were sending it to me. And so I was like, hey, help me out. Um, and, and so I, I jumped right into it seamlessly. What is it about this city that speaks to and appeals to you about this city or Toronto? Um, again, just. Uh, well, so I spent six months at uh, 40th last year in Vancouver, and there's something about Canada. Um, they love basketball, uh, and even in Vancouver, that doesn't have a team right now. It was just like, um, yeah, the, I don't know. I don't know if it's <laughs> everybody's extremely nice. Everybody, it's just different. And uh, again, every time I played here, it's been unbelievable, an unbelievable reception, and um, that's definitely just you know icing on the cake in terms of I wanted to find a situation. Uh, that would really fit me as a basketball player, but for it to be here is uh, definitely a, a bonus. You've done so many crazy highs and lows in your career. Uh, one thing you haven't really done is, as you mentioned, a chance to get on a team that could go for a run and do something unique in the postseason. Uh, how important is that to you? Uh, that's very important. You know, I, uh, I've been to the playoffs four times, haven't made it out the first round once. Um, and, you know, I was injured in a couple of those series, but. Um, you know, for me to be able to have a chance to do something special with this team, um, 
I mean, that's what you, everybody, every player, you grow up, you dream about this. And obviously for me, like a lot of highs and lows and all of a sudden I didn't expect it, but ended up, you know, in Atlanta, which, you know, they have something awesome. And I love that organization. I mean that they're, they're doing things the right way. They treat people the right way and, uh, and they're going to be good in years to come, but it didn't really uh, make sense in terms of where I was in my, in my timeline. And so, um, you know, all the respect to them and especially Travis and, and wrestler for even, you know, giving me this opportunity to be here. Like they, they did everything in terms of just making sure like everything down to even making sure I was whole and in terms of salary and everything, like it was um, top of the line. So, um, but to be able to have a chance to do that, to play deep into the playoffs, um, yeah, I'm tired of watching, uh, you know, and, and, and being hurt for two years kind of adds to that too. It's like I was hurt for two straight years, didn't get a chance to compete. Um, so this is awesome. Jeremy, what was the most impressive part of Pascal Siakam's first game this year? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. Uh, what wasn't impressive? I knew he was good, but uh, tonight was – something special um, efficiency I'm talking both ends of the floor um, everything from defense defensive rotations guarding multiple positions to being able to push it out um, play one-on-one -on -one, face up post up hit threes pop roll like he showed the full package tonight and so um, obviously an unbelievable talent and a uh, heck of a night for him happy for him even though I barely, I just met him but <laughs> hey 44 is 44 that's awesome you're going to get asked a couple questions at the end of this in, in Mandarin. Uh, does that happen very often in other cities? And, and how much of a factor is that about your enjoyment of coming to Toronto to play? Um, yeah, it probably happens in every city that has a primary, like has a strong Asian contingency. Um, and, and, you know, it happened in Atlanta as well, but uh, not this. Uh, so, uh, again, like, I'm very proud to represent Asian people on a global platform and a global scale. And so for me to be here where there's a lot of, you know, Asians is uh, like, I used to run from it, you know, because that's all everybody, anybody ever wanted to label me. It was like, oh, he's Asian, he's Asian, he's Asian. And I was like, talk about my basketball. But now I'm, you know, people have seen that I, I can play, I belong in the NBA and I've really embraced just being able to represent Asians and to do that the right way. Hopefully I do my best with it. Accept that responsibility because not every player has to carry that around. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think I was really jaded after the New York stretch, and um, I think there's a lot of things that happened that made me really kind of give up a little bit on people per se, um, and and um, and that was a huge part of the story, and that was a huge point of contention for a lot of people in terms of why I was getting the publicity or why things were the, why things were the way they were. Um, so I kind of wanted to run from that a little bit. I would say maybe three years down the road, I kind of turned the corner and I would say being hurt for two straight years and seeing that like my Asian fan base, I don't feel like has dropped off one bit. Um, like, and I haven't even touched the court. Like every year I go over to Asia and like, it's like, I can't even walk through the airport. Like it's insane. And so to see them do that after all the highs and lows, but really going through the lows post insanity and you know, which culminated in two in those injuries. Um, for me, it was, I was I'm still blown away, um, and and that's again that's fed into, you know, why I want to try to carry myself a certain way. Thank you guys. Sorry, Pascal's waiting outside. Cool. Can, uh, continue via Mandarin questions.